Tonight, hundreds of rail passengers are stranded after extreme heat damages tracks south of the border. All trains in the west and east coast main lines were cancelled. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll stay in the queue as long as possible now. I've got accommodation booked in London. I was due back yesterday, but uh, stayed last night. And I thought I was going to go on a train today. We'll see. But it was better news for passengers in Scotland as ScotRail returns to a full timetable. Also making the headlines, the latest inflation figures show prices are rising at their fastest rate for more than 40 years. As Scotland continues to struggle with drug deaths, we speak to one service on the approach they say saves lives. And in sports, Rangers' record deal. Calvin Bassey joins Dutch giants Ajax for more than £20 million. I'm Kellyanne Woodland in Edinburgh. And I'm John Mackay in Glasgow. This is the STV News at six. Good evening. Hundreds of rail passengers have faced disruption after the extreme heat damaged equipment on the lines. Routes from Scotland to London were cancelled or delayed because of buckled rails or fires. Direct services restarted this afternoon, but disruption is expected to continue. It left many passengers having to find alternative ways home. Well, our political correspondent Ewan Petrie is at Glasgow's central station. So Ewan, what's the situation there now? Well, there is still a queue here this evening. It's significantly reduced from what we saw earlier this afternoon. It has been coming and going, and even within the past half hour, it stretched the length of the concourse here and back out onto the street. It's all a result of these cancellations to services between Scotland and London as a result of the heat wave and damage to the lines. But services are slowly returning to normal. The backlog will take some time to clear, and that means for hundreds of passengers, it's been a day of disruption and frustration. This is what faced passengers looking to get a train to London. The queue outside Central Station in Glasgow stretched from the platform to the street outside and round the corner. How long have you been waiting in the queue then? Yeah, about two hours, about two and a half hours I think, uh, since about like half one when our train was meant to be. I came up to Edinburgh on Monday for work. I was due back yesterday but uh, stayed last night and I thought I was going to go on a train today. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'll stay in the queue as long as possible now. I've got accommodation booked in London. But we'll see how it goes. So you're facing a long wait to get back home today? We've just got to book the same hotel for tonight, just in case. Overheating train tracks and failing overhead cables on the east and west coast main lines left no direct trains between Scotland and London this morning. Network Rail had worked through the night to repair damage to signalling equipment after a fire between Peterborough and King's Cross. It was just before one o'clock when the first direct service left here, although the disruption continued. But while many faced lengthy delays and cancellations or having to find alternative ways home, others welcomed almost 700 services getting back on track. After almost two months of a limited timetable because of a dispute between train drivers and ScotRail, today marked a return to normal. We're quite remote to where we live, so we, we, we depend on public transport, so it's much better. We're only two trains every hour, and now there'll be three again, and which means the quick one is coming as well. However, more disruption for rail passengers lies ahead. The RMT union is planning a 24-hour walkout next Wednesday in a separate dispute over pay, jobs and conditions. Two further strikes are scheduled in August. Our timetable team is working flat out just now to plan how things will work on the strike day, but there will be a very limited service. There will be knock-on effects on the Thursday. We'll have teams out and about all across the network. Our message to customers is please plan ahead, check if your journey is running to make sure you know what's happening on the network rail strike days. More details of which services will run are expected next Monday. Ewan Petrie, STV News.
Prices are continuing to rise at their fastest rate for more than 40 years as the cost of living crisis intensifies. The latest figures show UK inflation rose to 9.4% in June, due largely to soaring fuel and food prices. Economists say far more help is going to be needed from the UK government to get the poorest families and businesses through the crisis. Here's our political reporter, Laura Alderman. With prices going up, many of us feel like we've less cash at our fingertips now. And for business owners, it's becoming more expensive just to keep the lights on. We've seen overheads go up massively. You know, electricity costs, gas costs are the predominant one. Things such as gloves have gone up by 40%. I do think that perhaps looking at business rates or looking at the VAT that we are paying and, you know, which is also going on to the consumer. So if we are putting the prices up, perhaps if they could review the VAT rate, then the customer doesn't get as much of a hit um, from that side. Inflation indicates the pace at which prices rise, and now it's hit a 40-year high at 9.4%. It's being driven largely by soaring petrol prices due to the war in Ukraine. And to be honest, it's affecting us a lot, and uh, uh, our wages is not enough to pay for petrol. Obviously, we're both students, so it's, yeah. it's a big impact to try and pay. Oh, it's a bit difficult, obviously, to try to keep up with the inflation and obviously to work the hourly rate's not going up. The price of everyday items like milk, cheese and eggs are rising rapidly, a growing concern when it's literally the bread and butter of a business. This year is the toughest so far for me, yeah. I felt like even dealing with the situation of coronavirus was much easier than that. Everything increased in price in the last few months, yeah, especially products that we heavily use. We've seen an increase between 20 and 50% in the food costs, like 125% uh, in oil. Retail has seen a small rise in sales in the last month, but not enough to combat the crisis. I think it'll be very difficult for retail sales to maintain the momentum that we've seen over the past month or so. There's various headwinds. Obviously, uh, chief amongst those is the cost of living and, and inflation. The UK government have announced a number of measures to try and help people with their gas and electricity bills, but it's likely that further measures are going to need to be put in place by the government to help people through this very difficult time. Unfortunately, there could be more bad news on the way as well, and experts predict things are set to get worse before they get better. Inflation could peak at around 10 or 11 percent, and then in October, energy bills are set to sharply rise again. Ultimately, hitting those poorest households the hardest. Laura Alderman, STV News, Edinburgh. Doctors are calling their 4.5% pay increase hugely disappointing and say they could go on strike. The Scottish Government says the award ensures senior medical staff continue to be the best paid in the UK. The BMA have criticised the deal and are calling for ministers to do more to boost the pay packets of medics, many of whom are burnt out from the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, Polly Bartlett is outside Glasgow's Queen Elizabeth University Hospital for us tonight. And Polly, what are the doctors telling you? Well, there's a real feeling of unhappiness about this pay award, which is for GPs, consultants, junior doctors and dentists. These are staff that have been on the front line of the pandemic and they're saying that with current rates of inflation, this is effectively a pay cut. Within the NHS, morale is at an all-time low and the BMA are now considering their next steps. They told me today that they're not ruling out strike action. We were hoping that we would see some recognition for all the hard work that we've put in, um, especially at the moment with current pressures. I mean, we're still in the midst of winter, essentially. It's July and it's just hideous. It's, it's more than just pay. I think we're just frustrated about being treated really, really badly. And the government had an opportunity here to show us that they cared and that they were listening to us and they haven't done that. We will work closely with the sector to ensure that we continue our strong relationships that we have. Of course, the idea of the threat of strikes in the healthcare service would concern me. The threat of strikes any, in any of our public sector would, would concern me and we'll continue to listen to the concerns of employees. This feeling of unhappiness is echoed across the public sector. In the last hour, we've learned that Police Scotland officers have rejected their pay deal and the Nurses' Union is asking nurses to do the same. 
This award for doctors comes just a day after a study found that trainee medics are at really high risk of being burnt out and the figures are growing. Over the last year, I've reported on junior doctors moving to Australia to continue their studies elsewhere for better pay and a better work-life balance. Behind me is the biggest teaching hospital in the country. Inside it tonight, there will be junior doctors actively considering their future in the NHS. Polly at the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital. Thank you. Conservative MPs have picked the two candidates who'll stand against each other to become the next Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss made it through after Penny Mordaunt was knocked out of the race. The announcement came after Boris Johnson received a standing ovation from his MPs as he finished his last Prime Minister's questions. But opposition leaders rounded on his record with the SNP claiming his leadership had driven support for Scottish independence to new heights. Our Westminster correspondent Catherine Sampson reports. Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss will be the candidates going forward to a final ballot of Conservative Party members. The final two have been found and Conservative members will now pick the next Prime Minister. Could they open the door for Rishi Sunak? The former Chancellor's resignation helped spark this contest. Pleased with the result? Yeah, very pleased with the result, absolutely. We've demonstrated that we have the confidence of a majority of MPs when we go into the next round in good heart. What will Rishi Sunak do in terms of Scotland and the Union? Well, Rishi Sunak's already demonstrated by his actions as Chancellor that he's going to govern for the whole United Kingdom, be that through the levelling up fund, in the pandemic, through the furlough scheme, the bounce back loan scheme, and everything he's done as Chancellor has demonstrated that he views Scotland in the same way as he views every other part of the UK. He's facing Foreign Secretary Liz Truss, who managed to overtake rival Penny Mordaunt at the final stage. Penny was very clear with the team when we first started that it was going to be um, a clean campaign that she was going to be running. I'm very proud that that's what we achieved. Um, there certainly was some dirty tricks and uh, some, some black ops, as some people call it, go, go, going on. Boris Johnson will stay on until early September, but left for his final Prime Minister's questions this afternoon. Opponents wished him well, but also rounded on his record. So here's Starmer highlighting criticism from the leadership debates. What message does it send when the candidates to be Prime Minister can't find a single decent thing to say about him, about each other, or their record in government? I'd like to thank the Prime Minister in his capacity as Minister of the Union for driving support for independence to new heights. I hope that he will reflect on his long-running campaign to break up the greatest country in the world. The Prime Minister had some advice for his successor. Focus, focus on the road ahead, focus on the road ahead, but always remember to check the rearview mirror. And on his own achievements. Mission largely accomplished. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Was that a hint he'll be back? Some during the send-off would like nothing more. Others on both sides of the House would prefer the Prime Minister left politics for good. So Catherine, what happens next? Well, so now voting packs go out to Conservative Party members. Um, it's estimated there's around 160,000 or so eligible uh, to vote. There'll then be a series of hustings through the summer. I can confirm tonight there will be a Scottish hustings. It's going to take place in Perth in August. In terms of the two candidates, yes, you know, Rishi Sunak ahead on that MP vote there. The membership can be a completely different thing, though. There are some in the membership not happy that his resignation prompted all this, while Liz Truss, of course, stayed. Uh, loyal to Boris Johnson. Uh, there's divisions on tax because Liz Truss um, has accused the Treasury of stoking inflation. She thinks that taxes should be lowered immediately. Clearly the key for whoever is going to win this is to try and restore some sense of unity after the last few years and after how this campaign has played out so far. Catherine at Westminster, thank you. Recent figures show far too many people are still dying in Scotland from drugs despite a national strategy and £250 million committed to tackling the crisis. Tomorrow, the task force, given the role of coming up with new solutions, will publish its final report. Ahead of its recommendations, STV News has been speaking to one recovery community in Glasgow on how it's prioritising aftercare and whole family approach for those leaving treatment. Here's our chief reporter, Sharon Frew. I didn't just have my but I wanted to clean. 
confronting the harsh realities of their addiction. She's the best thing for me, seeing my wee mom, she get peace of mind today. Doesn't have to worry about her son anywhere, no more clothes, we're never away from my house, and in the hospitals, prisons. Meetings are just one aspect of what happens here. Many who volunteer are only months into their own recovery. If I didn't have all this, I'd probably stop out there in active addiction and I would die for it. And there's no no answer, but last year I went through the results of my using drugs and all that again and ended up back in hospital and a psychosis. That's not the first psychosis I've went into. I've went into many psychoses and I've had people say to me, would you look at even make it out of them? I didn't know about places like this where people get better. This group in the Gorbals, started by two volunteers, is now a network. A decade ago, around 30 people attended. Now they welcome over 300 every week to various sessions and recovery cafes. I feel they saved my life. It was so, so hard trying to get help. A lot of people just put it down to, you're not trying, you don't want this. You love the drugs more than you love your family. My cousin drove me to the crisis centre, but I was that bad, they took me in that day. But then I came out and I really needed other people in my life because I felt so alone. Here they prioritise aftercare following treatment, as well as coordinated supports, including childcare, education and housing. If I'm perfectly honest, I'm employed on the back of my checkered past. So there was a lot of stigma. Uh, that went through time, through evidence, what we were actually trying to achieve and working with partners and partners also recognising lived experience was an asset rather than a hindrance. It's about connection for me and everybody supports that process. And sometimes we're a 24 hour service because I support people at night. The outreach support people take phone calls seven days a week. My phone is never off. On duty in the cafe is John. He says volunteering has given him structure to his day. I'm in a happy place in my life right now with it, drugs in it, and it's, I've never known that. That was all I ever knew. My mum died last year and I went back to drugs heavy. I went into stabilisation in November. I was in for six weeks. This is really the first job I've had. And it may be volunteering, but it's a job to me. I may not be paid for it, but I get paid in other ways. I'm grateful for it. Each took a different route to get to this place. And for others, many challenges remain in accessing the right treatment. Here they believe first-hand experience, honesty and practical advice is saving lives. Well, it's no fairy dust, you can't just get up. You can't get them up, do you know what I mean? You've got to want it. Because I can remember coming in here, sitting in a corner and not wanting like to talk to anybody. And I've had to push through all that stuff. We already know it's not working. I believe if it wasn't for the recovery communities in each of the city and all the work we're doing with third sector organisations, progress would be a lot higher. I know that I'm not 100% fixed. It was when I tried to run that I fell the last time and that's not going to happen again for me. I can't put myself or my family through that again. So I'll be going at a snail's pace and I'll get there in the end. Sharon through STV News. On to other stories across Scotland now, and a second arrest has been made after the death of a man in Lanark. 24-year-old Peter Kirkwood died in the early hours of Saturday on Mousebank Road. A 44-year-old man is in custody. A 22-year-old man was arrested on Sunday but has since been released. It's been confirmed Scotland experienced its hottest ever day yesterday with a new record of 35.1 degrees Celsius. Temperatures soared across the country. The previous record high was exceeded by two degrees at Flores Castle in the Borders. And Sir Ian McKellen is to return to the Edinburgh Fringe more than 50 years on from his last performance at the festival. He's sharing the role of Hamlet with dancer Johan Christensen in a ballet based on the Shakespearean play. Peter Schaffers, the great dancer of, of, of my lifetime, who runs this uh, amazing place, wonderful old church St Stephen's, he's devised a hamlet which brings some of the words, which will be my responsibility, uh, but all the movement is up to uh, Johan and the dancers you probably see behind us. Now, toilets. 
many of us won't give any thought to finding one when we're out and about, although some older folk might want to know there is one nearby. But access to those loos is something most of us take for granted. Not so the quarter of a million people in the UK with a disability. Finding a facility which has enough space and the right equipment to help them is challenging. But as Vanessa Taff reports, a new initiative might be about to make that easier. Jill has cerebral palsy. When she's out and about, a standard toilet doesn't meet her needs. Going to the toilet is a basic human right, but sometimes I can't and that's terrible. For 2022, where is the inclusion in the world? Anyone should be included in this world, especially disabled people, so that while the need of changing places is really important. She's involved in the Changing Places campaign. It's calling for specially adapted accessible toilets to be installed at all major public spaces, similar to those at some bigger venues in Glasgow. This is a great example of a good Changing Places toilet. Toilets like this one include a hoist, bed and have some extra space for the user's carers to help. In Scotland, there are currently 254 Changing Place toilets Campaigners say the lack of appropriate toilets is a real issue. Our campaign, I think, has raised the awareness of the need for them, and Jill has done an amazing job, you know, in supporting that. But now we need to talk about how we keep them open and how we make sure that people just accept that there are a whole range of people that need them, and please don't question everybody before they need to get in. For Jill, her biggest hope is that these facilities can become the norm for disabled people in cities and towns across the country. Vanessa Taff, STV News, Glasgow. And now Greg is here with the sport. Get your fill of the action. STV Sports, sponsored by Papa John's Pizza. Good evening. Calvin Barsi has completed his move from Rangers to Ajax for a club record fee of more than £20 million. The defender, who made 65 appearances for the Ibrox side since joining in 2020, has signed a five-year deal with the Dutch Giants. Ollie Dickinson has more. Well, this has been a pretty incredible rise, hasn't it, for Calvin Bassi, a player that joined Rangers two seasons ago for less than a quarter of a million pounds from Leicester, leaves today for a club record transfer fee to Dutch Giants Ajax for a fee totalling more than £20 million. And let's be honest, if you go back a season, a season and a half, Bassi wasn't even the first choice left back, let alone the first choice centre half at the club. But it's those performances in the Europa League that have triggered the attention of Ajax and other clubs. Ajax are well known for spotting some of the best developing talent in Europe and bringing them on board, and that is what they have done with Calvin Bassi, a player that has excelled in the Europa League, now goes to Holland for, as I say, a club record fee from Rangers, and he'll be playing in the Champions League against some of the very biggest names that European football has to offer. Now, Jake Whiteman says it's crazy that he's the 1,500-metre world champion and believes his Olympic heartache spurred him on to success. The Scottish runner broke the championship record in Oregon on his way to the gold medal, his first on the global stage. Here's Sheila McLaren. From one middle-distance superstar to another, Sebastian Coe presented the new golden boy of British athletics with his medal after his stunning victory in Eugene. I really believe coming into this that I had a good opportunity to get a medal and the word opportunity is probably what I take from this is that mm -hmm. there, was, there was a good chance for me to, to kind of rectify what went so bad in Tokyo and to come away from this with a good chance for a medal but to be world champion and to beat a field as strong as that is like crazy and it's, it's definitely not something that... The 28-year-old needed to be at his best to hold off a field including Olympic champion Jacob Ingebrigtsen. He timed his move with perfection to clinch gold in a world-leading time. The celebrations were a family affair. Not only was his mum Susan there to see it, Dad Jeff was commentating on the race. You can go back to school sports days um, and I was announcing Jake's races because Susan was his PE teacher, so I used to get roped into those sort of things at Fettis College in Edinburgh. So it's probably 15 years' worth of events where I've been announcing Jake's races and the stadiums have got bigger and the medals have got bigger and uh, 
you know, the titles have got bigger, but this is the first one he's won. Fellow Scott Josh Kerr finished in fifth place and with Laura Muir also clinching a bronze earlier in the week, it's looking good for Team Scotland ahead of the Commonwealth Games. It's fantastic. You no, know, I, I think we've, we've got really tremendous role models in those athletes and, and, and others and it's, it's just helps with the confidence going into Birmingham that Scots can, can deliver strong performances in finals. It's been a 39-year wait for a British male to win the 1500 metres gold after Steve Cram back in 1983. And with Whiteman in the form of his life, there could be more records to break in the coming months. To golf now, and Henrik Stenson has been stripped of the captaincy of Europe's Ryder Cup team as he prepares to join the Live Series. Former Ryder Cup captain Colin Montgomery is preparing for the Senior Open at Glen Eagles. Speaking before the announcement, he gave his views on the controversial issue that's dominating the sport. It's, it's a shame we're even talking about it, to be honest with you. You know, the, when I was announced as Ryder Cup captain, it was the biggest honour that can be bestowed on any European, European tour player. But at the same time, I just like to concentrate on what we're doing. Uh, I'm a very, very happy member of the PJ Tour of America now because I do in the Champions Tour, the DP World Tour, of course, my own tour, and uh, the Legends Tour here. And they're in very, very good health. Well, tomorrow night we'll be live from Fir Park as Motherwell make their return to European football. They'll face Sligo Rovers in the first leg of the Europa Conference League qualifier. Motherwell boss Graham Alexander says he's happy with his attacking options despite striker Kevin Van Veen being an injury doubt. I'm confident that we have enough goal scoring threats within our team and our squad, I should say, um, to, to score the amount of goals we did last season because. You know, if you took you know, penalties away from non-penalty goals, we were the fourth top scorers in the SBL. So you know, the, the difficulty we had or the, the improvements we feel we have to make on the defensive side of it you know, and not concede as many goals as we did. And last bit of sport from me this evening. Hearts have confirmed the signing of former Dundee United forward Lawrence Shankland on a three-year deal from Belgian side Bearshot. Get your fill of the action. STV Sports, sponsored by Papa John's Pizza. Sean has the weather and apparently rain is now good news. Watch out for a sudden temperature drop. Tui Blue Hotels, sponsor STV Weather. Well, we'll start to see that big change coming in in the weather this weekend, all down to this low-pressure system coming out of Canada, bringing us that rain, particularly wet across Argyle and also the Highlands. But that's going to come as welcome news. You'll get a weekend off, hopefully, from watering the hanging baskets, getting the hose out in your gardens. Slightly warm area coming back northwards through the weekend as well, but nowhere near as hot as it has been over the last few days. Temperatures just getting back to the low 20s, maybe the mid-20s in one or two spots. But there's going to be plenty of rain around for the weekend, as I said, and some heavy, possibly thundery at times too. Now, a lot of dry, fine weather to end today, mostly dry during tonight. Temperatures, look at that, single figures once again. So, yes, feeling a lot, lot better for getting to sleep through the evenings just now with that fresher air around. Now into tomorrow, a lot of dry weather with sunny spells, just a possibility more so further east and towards the south, South Lanarkshire, also the borders from Fries and Galway, risk of a few very isolated showers cropping up, but for most of us light winds, dry with sunshine tomorrow temperatures still into the low 20s around uh, central parts of the country, again across Lanarkshire. So feeling nice in that sunshine, much better for us in Scotland, 20, 21 degrees. So feeling pleasant, not oppressive. Now on Friday, we'll start to see that change coming in from the west, some heavy showers developing, and then we'll see more prolonged spell of heavy, possibly thundery rain coming in on Saturday. Tui Blue Hotels, sponsor STV Weather. Glad the rain's back, Kellyanne. Well, it wouldn't be Scotland if it wasn't raining, John. So, so yeah, I'm glad it's back. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. <laughs> good night.